This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 76 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and that's my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And uh, this week, we are doing... um, so <clears throat> we started a new franchise in our last episode. Now, this episode is uh, we're continuing on with our patron voted on films. Now, a couple weeks ago, we began this, uh, the, the patron voting. So far, we have done uh, The Raid Redemption, which was from our patron, Jay. He's the main man, and he picked The Raid. It was great. Then, Robert, another one of our patrons, he picked a movie that we couldn't find. So he picked a second movie, which ended up being Blue Thunder. We reviewed that. And then last week, Stephanie from uh, I'll Buy the Popcorn here on YouTube, we did her movie, which was, of course, Cradle to the Grave, starring DMX (laughs) and Jet Li. That was a fun time. And now this week, uh, as I mentioned last week, we have our original patron. Actually, I believe she was the first one who ever signed up. Beckish, she voted for a little movie. Now, this was the first time watched for you. I already know that. Called The Long Kiss Goodnight. Directed by Rennie Harlan and written by Shane Black. Uh, did you, you didn't know that when you went to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we're going to be reviewing that. And then next week we will wrap it up with our final Patreon pick. So all that, get it out the way. We're about to go over some box office numbers. And we're going to go over some critical score. But before we do any of that, if you are watching on YouTube, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Comment, do you like The Long Kiss Goodnight? Is it a movie that you like to see or did you not like it? Give us your ratings. Give us your scores. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to us on the go, make sure you are set up for your auto downloads, whether it be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, wherever you listen to us, make sure you're subscribed so you get those downloads. Two episodes every single week. All right. Got all the housekeeping out the way. Alex, yes. first time watch for you, correct? Yeah. You've never even come across this like on TV or nothing? No. I mean, I know the, the two actors that were in the film, but i never seen right. what the film is about. So. Okay, so this was my first time seeing it in, sheesh, I don't know, years. It's been years. I didn't really remember a lot of it when I went to watch it. I'll, mm. I'll tell the truth. So I was like, I know Gina Davis is in this. I know Samuel Jackson's in this. And I know they were snowing. That's yeah. all I really remembered. Uh, so this was a pretty good rewatch. For, it was almost like a first time watch. Now, before we get into it, how much money did this movie make back in 1996? All right, so let's get into the box office numbers of The Long Kiss Goodnight. 1996 domestic 33 million dollars international 56 million dollars on the worldwide total 89 million dollars on a budget of 65 million dollars that explains it you know i was gonna ask a question and i'll still ask it when when we get to the review but uh this explains it okay so it (laughs) made a little bit more you know i don't remember marketing from when i was a kid being like crazy for this movie so they probably didn't spend a lot on it so it made it 20 million. I mean, it wasn't a loss. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. I guess. Anyway, how did it do with the critics and how did the fans like this movie, according to Rotten Tomatoes? So this is one of those rare ones, which actually has been popping up lately on some of our reviews, where the critics and the audience is the same exact score. I don't, we did like 65 episodes where it never happened. And now all of a sudden, every other week, this thing, there's a movie with the same score. So this has a 70% with critics and a 70 percent with audience wow so it's a well-liked and well-reviewed movie you know box office notwithstanding yeah it's it's weird right because we did we already up to 76 uh episodes yeah. right and most of these ratings are always one higher than the other so yeah. it's kind of rare when you get the even slate across the board from critics and audience so let's see if they're right so let's throw all those numbers right. out but what i'm saying is the last yeah. three weeks We've had it. Uh, Raid Redemption had an 87 and an 87. Okay. Expendables 2 had a 66, a 67 and a 67. And now this one, a 70 and a 70. And that's rare. Like, th- it almost never happens. But all of a sudden, every every other week, it's happening. But uh, <laughs> we're picking who cares, right? Who cares? Because <laughs> who cares? it doesn't matter because we're going to tell you our scores. <laughs> and we don't even care yeah. about Ron Tomatoes. We're just uh, giving you some background information. That's all. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Do you all right. So it? let's get right to it. We're going to get right to it. So lead character played by one Gina Davis. Mm. Um, Alex, you got to go first. It's my <laughs> yeah, hosting episode, so I I'm very do. excited to see what you think. All right, so Gina Davis plays a split personality character. Now, when I started to watch this movie, I'm not going to go into the storyline as much, but in terms of the character, I started to get hit with like tons of action uh, spy movies. I got hit with Assault. I got hit with The oh, Bournes. Yeah. 
Because it was straight born. When it, I was like, wait a minute, this is born identity. When she when he forgot he got the amnesia when he fell off the boat when he got shot. It's exactly yep. the same story. But for those of you out there, Born Identity came out in 2002 while this movie was 96. So technically, this right. is the first movie with these storylines. But Identity was a book. So I don't want people to be like, oh, it's a book first. I don't know when it was published. So Ooh, with that said, good point. Um, I don't either. I don't yeah, remember. I don't I know when the, 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 the Born Identity was published. But in terms of a movie, this movie came out first with that storyline. So I'm going to throw all those movies to the side. But it reminded me of those. I got to say, I kind of enjoyed the character. I, I like how she went from being a household mom because she was, a you know, amnesia kicked in. And then it became more of a, a, a spy more <laughs> later down the road. But is Gina Davis an action star? That's the thing that I was sitting down and watching. I cannot back that up, man. I, cause <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get into it. I just kept seeing the Beetlejuice Gina Davis in the in like that's all I remember her for. And it's funny because I watched this with my wife, so she watches it more for like those dramas, like those yeah. political drama movies that she's in. But this was kind of weird for me. Like this is my first movie of Gina Davis doing an action movie. I'd never you seen never her saw, in action. Uh, uh, Cutthroat Island. Nope, I never seen Cutthroat Island. So this Came is out my a year first. Before this. Okay, yeah. so this is my first action movie. It was kind of weird, but she did very well. I, I thought she was really good. Um, she didn't do much hand to hand, like like how we got the action movies now with the females. They're more hands on fighting. This was sure. more shooting, more spyish. Yeah. It's a mystery, right? It was like a mystery action style yeah. of movie. So I gave her a four. I thought she was really good, especially with her with Samuel Jackson was really good. I mean, we could talk a, a little bit about him. I liked him in this movie. He was a typical Samuel Jackson in like every movie that he does, all the cursing. And um, he was like, but, but but he was a little like nicer in this movie than he, he was is in most yeah. of his other. He can, he, he didn't come off as like, as a, as a prick in this movie, like he can, which he's amazing at, by the way, he's yeah. one of the best, like angry black, characters you know what i mean like angry black man characters mm -hmm. he does it better than anyone but he wasn't that in this quite he, well, he he was like a real good guy yeah but you got that a little bit though when the beginning of the only movie at, when he the was the cop like, he's shady and, right like okay he's he he makes his money shady ways but he wasn't a total you know like jerk he he was pretty much a good guy he did want to kind of fix his life you know you know the scene with the kid with yeah. his son mm -hmm. and you know so he's like a good guy with some tendencies to be a little bit of a you know, the bad guy. The only yeah, thing I, I agree with you. I liked him. I, I liked him too. The only thing I was a little confused with his character was, was he the informant for her? Like, well, did they work together? Because my thing is, is like, he was a, P, a, 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 a private detective, right? He, uh, 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 whatever. He searches for people. And then all of a sudden she came out of the woodwork and all of a sudden I'm going to go and find this chick. Like he was always looking for her. Is like, did they always work together or it was just one of those uh, things, I don't know. Maybe um, we talk about it when we get to the story. Yeah, I my know. bad. I, I know, I'm my bad. All right. In <laughs> terms of lead character, I give it a four. I give All it right. Four. So yeah. I don't want to spend too much time because uh, let's so we can move on. But I will say this: I like Gina Davis in this movie. I, I, I she's not like one of my favorite actresses. Like she's in a bunch of movies I like. Like yeah. I like The League of Their Own, Beetlejuice, this one. The other one. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's another <laughs> the Gina Davis. Other one. What? <laughs> Earth Girls are easy. The Earth what? Girls are easy. That was a pretty good movie with um, Jeff Goldblum oh, and Jim man. Carrey. Yeah, I already said that. Oh, The Fly. Yeah, I like her in The Fly. She's a good actress. Yeah. Uh, how's this character? The character's cool. You're right. You, there were sprinkles of other stuff, but it's stuff that this came out before. So the amnesiac, amnesiac type thing. I think she did a good job. I liked her as the. I agree with you. I think she's more believable as the mom, like as the homemaker teacher character um, than she is as like the super spy person when she cuts her hair and dyes it and tries to be all like sexy and tough. But I like the character. We're writing the character more so than the necessarily the actress. I think Gina Davis did her best. I think she did a good enough job, but I like the character. I think it's she was an interesting character. I also gave her a four. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm right there with you on, on that. Okay. Okay. Lee wait, wait, Willen. wait, wait. Main before, before, yeah. before, I, I found the information on the book. So, okay. Born Identity by Robert Lindum. I hope I said his name right. Came out February of 1980. Well, well, 
Oh, uh, so uh, that's maybe that's Shane Black never out there. read it. I don't know. No, I'm he just saying that just for those it. out there that are, are are trying to figure it out, 1980 came out the original Born Identity by Robert Lind. Uh, I hope I said his damn L- Ludlum. Or Ludlum. He's the one yeah. that wrote the first book. So there you go. And then the movie came out 2002 when he sold the rights like a dummy. All right, let's go. <laughs> okay. There right. go. Ma- uh, okay, main villain. Now we you asked me who it was. Yes. I don't know his name. Maybe you have Timothy. It in front of you. I don't know either. Timothy. Okay, yes. the main villain in this movie is Timothy. Tell us about him. All right, Timothy. I'm gonna be honest with you. He wasn't <laughs> through this whole movie at all. He was. You know what made this movie a little bit weird was I felt like everyone was a bad guy. I didn't know who, like, it was weird sure. in terms, like, I didn't know Samuel Jackson had a motive. I didn't know the guy that played, uh, uh, that created Wolverine was the bad guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brian Cox. Yeah, yeah Brian Cox. I didn't that know. He's been the, old forever. Yeah, he's way. been. Yeah, why was he I old? I was say that. Um, been old forever. Yeah, and you know what's funny? He was in a Bourne movie, in Bourne Supremacy. When he had to bring, he, he put Jason Bourne together. Anyway, I didn't know who was what. But anyway, Timothy's the bad guy because he is the main dude. <laughs> um, he was weird. Um, he was a typical over-the-top villain, I guess. Uh, he kills anybody without act- uh, without question. I liked him. He was okay. I gave him a three and a half. I, I thought he was good. Um, he wasn't great villain. Like He wasn't throughout the whole movie. Now- yeah. I don't even think we scored the same person, to be honest with you. Did yeah. you is Timothy the guy who <laughs> she ends up telling him that's your daughter? That yes, guy? that's Timothy. Oh, I so I scored his like handler guy, the CIA guy, the, the real what? old guy. No, the guy Timothy's the main villain. <laughs> well, he was like a henchman. I, I looked at him more of like a main oh, henchman. Oh, Lord Almighty. He's because the, the other dude. guy. Well, you gotta look at it this way. Here's how I'm looking at the movie. <laughs> so the the CIA guy okay. is the one who is sending all these people to go kill her. He's the one who he uh they you know they uh, he wanted to blow he blew up the World Trade Center so yeah. the CIA get, uh, CIA could get money. He was more of the master planner, so I scored him, which is fine. You know what? The, all the, right, if I score like him, a, I will give that <laughs> old guy a two because <laughs> he, 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 that yeah. guy stunk. Timothy, yeah, I gave so, him a three and a half. Okay. Well, I scored the CIA guy. I gave him a one. He's a terrible <laughs> villain. He's he's just an old guy. I feel like this was the only weak part of the movie. Yeah, was that he's suck. Like I don't like that kind of villain anyway. You know, he just has a bunch of henchmen do all the work for him. Uh, but you're right. Almost everyone that shows up, pretty sure was a bad guy. Like David Morse's character is a bad guy. Yeah. I still don't know if Brian Cox was a really a bad guy because he drowns. And I don't know. I know he helped them. But I also don't know if he was going to try some shady stuff. Yeah. His name was Nathan, though. So I like that. That was pretty good. Um, but yeah, he wrote it in the book. I saw it. It's Nathan. Uh, so one point for that. But I don't know. He might be a bad guy. He might be a good guy. I don't know. Everyone's shades of gray. You know, even her. Like, she's the main person we're following. But she was also like an assassin. And she seemed like a jerk when she was like, the assassin version of her seemed like a real jerk. So everyone's kind of bad. That's why Samuel Jackson comes out looking the best out of everybody. He's like the least meanest person. Either way, if I scored the same guy as you, Timothy, yeah, I give him a three. He was, at least he did stuff. You know, like he was more hands-on. He was going after her. He was trying to kill her, unlike the old guy. So I'll give him a three. I give the CIA guy a one. Uh, but so we, I, I what is the my, main one we're, we're ranking on, though? Uh, I'm, I'm just sticking with the one. I think okay, the so then I'll keep the two. All right. He's, he's in charge. But he you was know, terrible. He was, yeah, he was. He was, was you know what? I, I, I'll change I'm going to give him a one, too, because he sucked. <laughs> He's a one. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, action scenes. Oh, this is the action movie guys podcast. How are the action scenes? Yeah. So the action wasn't as crazy. <laughs> I mean, in the beginning was uh, actually I liked the beginning more. When the guy showed up with the shotgun with the carolers, I thought that was awesome. And then he I, was, I thought that was a pretty cool sequence. And there is the perfect example of how I was like, Gina Davis is not an action star because that scene alone felt weird like like she was she wasn't even hand to hand all she did was she slid she just fought fought with him with the shotgun she shot they pushed she threw she started throwing pans at him and i'm like wait a minute but if you're a spy like I, i'm i was still torn at that point because i'm like is she still in in the well, mom her muscle view? memory didn't kick all the way in yeah yeah so like she was cutting carrots and stuff and then she's like look at me i'm a chef she yeah. didn't know she was a spy, so she thought she was a chef. Well, she threw the knife into the middle of a tomato at the wall. <laughs> I mean, her muscle True. memory came back. But, I mean, I, I guess in that situation. But anyway, that was a cool sequence. I thought the the car chase scene was pretty cool. The I did not like her on the skates 
following the, when when she got the two skates oh, yeah, and then yeah, she was the going against I, yeah. that made no damn sense to me because I was like these cars were like way ahead of you and you just got there in like two seconds which I was like it, it is what it is the ending sequence was actually really cool where I don't know Shane Black is like so into this like one action scene of shooting the rope and the character grabs one gun and shoots because that's the same ending we got in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with Robert Downey Jr. Remember that? Shane Black. I yeah, mean, remember that scene? His, he know, grabbed he I think grabbed we talked about his his writing style. Like yeah. all these movies are kind not they're not exactly the same, but they all have a lot of similarities. And they're all always Christmas time. This is like a secret Christmas movie. I guess Lethal Weapon. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, we have to give it the, we're going to have to bust out the Santa Claus ranking for this movie. We, I didn't we, even we remember should. it being a Christmas movie. I didn't either. I thought it was weird. But yeah, you know, there was a lot of similarities to other movies. Now that you talked about it, same kind of stuff throughout all his writing. Again, in terms of action, I enjoyed it for what it was. I gave it a four and a half. I thought it was a great action. I thought it was really good. I mean, we're not into storyline. That's different. But in yeah. terms of action, I was entertained with Gina Davis um, and what they gave her. Right. So this was directed, of course, by Rennie Harlan. Okay. who uh, you might know from such action movies in the 90s as Die Hard 2, uh, oh. Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone, um, this, Cutthroat Island. Um, you know, he's done, he's done some stuff. He also did a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh, he did Deep Blue Sea, which is like a guilty pleasure. I like that movie. So, you know, he, uh, he's a... I, wouldn't, I will stop short of saying he's a really good director. I do think he has pretty good style, though. I'll give him that. I think he's a pretty good stylist as far as his action set pieces. I like the action in the movie. Um, there's lulls, but we're going to get to story in a second. I feel like the story carried it through, which is which, you know, that works out when there's like stretches of non-action. This is not like a every five minutes action scene type movie. You yeah. know what I mean? It's characters, it's dialogue, it's storyline. And then there's like a shootout or something like that. I like the first shootout. I like the last shootout in the like hotel or whatever. Yeah. That was hilarious. When Samuel Jackson blasted out the window and then threw the sign. Oh my God. That was it was a... so funny. Um, <laughs> he you know, hit the like, tree. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. He goes through the tree and he falls down. Hilarious. I like the end end with the, with the, with the truck scene and the cars. Like I thought it was all well done. I gave it a four. You know, it's not, uh, uh, like I said, I saved my fives for like the peak pinnacle of action. This yeah. is not that, but there's quality action spread throughout the movie, mostly shooting. You're right. Not a lot of like, fist fighting or anything like that. But the shootouts are well staged. The car chases are well staged. Some of the effects don't quite hold up, especially like with the fire and stuff and they're driving away. Like it was um, a little yeah. bit cheesy, but you know what? It's a, it's a sign of the times. I don't really hold it against it. So I give it a four. Okay. Storyline. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, the storyline. Honestly, the storyline was pretty good. Some points was a little, it started to get slow certain points, but it was a typical mystery sci uh not sci-fi uh, mystery spy movie right like when you watch all these spy movies they all kind of the same formula you got to get the it did great in character development that i gotta say yeah it did very I good agree. in that i enjoyed the story i don't want to stay too long because i know you want to break this down even more i gave this a four i enjoyed the storyline for what it was I, I thought it was really yeah. good so i you know what i'm, I'm again I'm, I'm right there with you i think this is a very well in my opinion a very well written action movie yeah. The writing is good. Shane Black, you know, say what you want about him. I know he has fans, a lot of fans. And I know he has some, you know, who are not big fans. He has tropes, but he makes very entertaining scripts. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's always humor. There's the same thing in this. It's always Christmas. There's always humor. I think mean, he did a good job with the characters. I agree with you. The character development is good, especially with Gina Davis. She goes on a full fledged, you know, journey through this movie. She starts off one way. She doesn't remember who she is. She wants to find out. It starts coming back a little bit here and there because, you know, she gets knocked in the head and she gets in a car crash and whatever. And, you know, and then, you know, when she she has to deal with some stuff, right? Because when she finds out she's a spy and is like a killing machine, she also has a kid who she didn't want. She's like, I didn't want that kid. I had that yeah. kid when I was, uh, you know, I thought I was a school teacher. So her character, she goes through a lot. And I like the whole progression. I like, like I said, I like Samuel Jackson. He's a good sidekick. I think it's very well written. I thought the storyline was the most interesting part of the movie, more than the action necessarily, mm. which is fine. It does, it's a good, entertaining movie. A little long. I agree with you. Did drag a little bit. It's two hours. Could have been about an hour 40. Yeah. I think that would have hit the sweet spot, but that's okay. As such, I gave it a four and a half. Oh, wow. I thought it was good. It's a good script. I like, I, I like Shane Black in general. Yeah. I, I think he's a good writer. Well, you know, Predator, the Predator notwithstanding. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> Predator, Predator was good. Predator not with, not with yeah. standing, but you know, you're talking about Lethal Weapon, this, yeah. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, the other guys. Those are all very well written, very good movies. So uh, I like them, but yeah, four and a half for me. Okay, so overall. Look, overall, this had great story, great character development, great action. I mean, there's nothing more I can say because the movie had everything that you enjoy if you're a spy fan, if you like mysteries. This was kind of a mystery if you if, if you want to find out who did this to her. Um, she was shot in the head. I mean, that's how she got the... the, the she forgot everything. So she got also hit. that deer. That deer kicked her right in the face. Oh <laughs> my god! What, what, what oh. No, no, it killed. It, it kicked the old dude. dude. It kicked the oh, old yeah, dude kicked in the, the face. Guy. But yeah. it had to touch her face too. It was like it, it was really dude. Yeah, I those mean, hands. How, yeah, and then he grabbed yeah. her boob. Remember, he was like, oh. yeah. Well, that's why she crashed because she was like, hey, don't do that. Smash! Deer comes in, kicks the dude in the face. She goes flying out the windshield. Yeah, and then she broke its neck. I said, this is crazy. It's yeah, crazy stuff happening. It's crazy stuff. But you know, they, but there was other elements too of um when she's talking to herself in the mirror. I thought that was pretty mm-hmm. cool when she was like, "Oh, I'll, I'm going to take over." Oh, like her uh, memory like the bad guy. Back out. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. "Okay, that's pretty cute." Look, I gave it a four. I thought this movie was a great movie. I, I gave it a flat four for overall. Very good. Yeah, you know what? Same. I'm right. Same score as you. I also have it as a four. Look, we already broke it down. Great lead character. What I was going to say was, and the question was when we got to the box office, okay. I'm really surprised there's no sequels to this movie because mm. the character strikes me as a character that you can do a lot with in future films. Maybe the you know the fact that it wasn't a big hit is why we didn't get another one. But if you're telling me you can't make another story where some other spy group or some other person that she did something to in the past doesn't come after her, and she has to like call up Samuel Jackson for them to team up again. I'll call you a liar. It, I feel like it could have written itself, but I digress. There's only one of these movies, and it's very good. I also gave it a four. The only weakness for me was the villain, and that's just because we score main villain, like who's the one that made everything in motion, and he's Damn. terrible. Some of the henchmen are pretty good. There's a lot of bad guys. There's like five different people, pretty much, who try to kill her. So, and then all their like little military people or whatever. Good overall movie. I also gave it a four. So what's your total score? My total score is a 17 and a half out of 25. Please. I have the same exact score. 17 and a half out of 25. <laughs> and the only reason, the, if, if it had a good villain, it would be like a 20 movie, you know, or 21. But because it's just an old dude who does nothing and just wants the CIA to get money, I'm, I don't like that. It's very lame. So the villain is the only weakness. But otherwise, it's a good movie. You know, it's kind of funny that you said they, sh- they could have did a sequel. I felt the same way with Salt with Angelina Jolie, and we never got a sequel for that movie. And it was the nope. same as this, right? She was a sleeper that had a husband or whatever, and then they came out of the woodwork. Like, she was rushing and in that movie. She wanted to get out. She was yeah, like, she I wanted want out. out but... I want to just be normal. They didn't let her. This one, she's like, <laughs> she didn't want to be normal. She was yeah. just kind of forced into it. But then she came back out. Now, the thing is, at the end of this movie, of course, she ends up, you know, she's like on the farm with the family. Yeah, Great, beautiful. She's, she's going to live her peaceful life. She's rich. But you're telling me you can't think of like a storyline where someone comes after her in her peaceful life and maybe they kill the husband or they kidnap the kid or something, you know, again or something. Yeah. She goes after him. I would have been there for it. But it didn't happen. I, would, I don't want to see it. Gina Davis is too old. I will say this. <laughs> this would be a movie I would enjoy as a remake. With a good writer and director, and good at oh maybe Jennifer Gardner ooh she would be great for this. It might be she a little too old, side but too. yeah, um, I would like to see her. Be someone in her thirties, yeah, you know what I mean, like someone in their thirties. Who's in their thirties now? Emily Blunt is in her thirties. Scarlett Johansson. I know she already did Black Widow, but I'm just saying, yeah, maybe uh, you know they they all could play that role. And plus, Charlie Baltimore is a great name. I know there's a rapper named Charlie Baltimore. She stole that <laughs> name from this Baltimore. movie. Charlie Baltimore is a great, that's like a great character name. Like, what's your spy name? Charlie Baltimore. That, yeah, Charlene Baltimore. Yeah, it's pretty good. Charlene. I like it. That could have been the second movie. They could have called the second one Charlie Baltimore. That would have been awesome. You don't have to call it The Long Kiss Goodnight 2. You know what I mean? Yeah. Been Maybe. Anyway. It could be. You know what to do, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that yeah. is The Long Kiss Goodnight. Um, next week, you'll be getting two more brand new episodes. We will be doing Rush Hour 2, which has been a minute since I've seen, but I always remember loving Rush Hour 2 more than one, but I I don't remember. We'll see. And then our final patron-voted movie will be from uh, uh, Jonathan, our our patron Jonathan. He chose the movie Kick-Ass. So our first, I think that's, is that like our first kind of comic book movie that wasn't, we only did 
We, we don't did do Black a lot Panther. of comic book movies. Though. We did Black Panther, and that's, and that's pretty it. much it. Yeah. So we haven't dipped our. We've only barely dipped our little pinky baby toe into comic book movies. Kick ass <laughs> will be the next one we're going to be doing. So you want to definitely keep an eye out for those two next week. Yeah. So if you want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Nate Flix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Nate Flix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie guys podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Action Movie Guys Podcast. Uh, we're working on a website. Uh, it'll be available soon, hopefully. But other than that, that is your host, Nate from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alex Figueroa. Be awesome to each other and geek out. <laughs>